All right, so uh, this is just going to be a quick video that's in a lot of ways just a review video, but one that focuses just on pendulums uh, instead of some of our other videos that have kind of split between the pendulums and the oscillating springs. So I'm going to pull some of the, the most important facts uh, together right here. Uh, the first thing that I want to look, look at, though, is the direction of the net force uh, or the direction of the acceleration with these objects. Uh, so for, for this one here, um, uh, we have a pendulum that I kind of show at a uh, moment as it's falling down. Uh, one interesting fact, just as an aside, is that these are not equally spaced in time. Uh, it turns out that um, as it gets uh, closer to the bottom, it would be going faster and faster. So it would probably be more realistic to draw it spaced out something like that, where like it takes the same amount of time to go from here to there, but then now it's starting to go really fast, it gets there more quickly. Uh, but let's focus on the net force. So at this highest moment here, the net force is going to be down in that direction because tension won't have to exist. There's nothing that's pulling it to the left. There's just gravity pulling it back down to get it to start moving back and forth again. And at the lowest moment, we know that the acceleration is centripetal, so it's pointing up. So you'll notice here that we have forces going in two totally different directions uh, as it moves across here. So what really happens is that as it goes down, these vectors start, the net acceleration starts uh, moving up towards the top. So it's like accelerating down, ugh, down, and then more and more and more and more and more, and then up as it goes through the middle, and then back, and then eventually goes back down. Uh, so that's not to say that um, always at 45 degrees, the accelerations do, do left. A lot of that's going to depend on where we start it from uh, and what the velocity is as it's doing some of this stuff. Uh, but in general, what I just want you guys to take away is as it gets closer to the maximum height that a pendulum could possibly be, the acceleration is going to be more and more downwards. It's always going to be upwards in the middle. And we're going to have something that's like a diagonal down, diagonal up, or maybe due left or right as it's uh, somewhere along one side. So just keep in Keep in mind that there's a lot of directions that the net force and the acceleration can point on a pendulum. And that's part of what makes it such a challenging problem if you're trying to do it with forces and kinematics. Okay, moving over to the pendulum though and some of the big ideas, um, something that a lot of questions get asked about is they ask you about the minimum and maximum values uh, as it moves back and forth. So um, I have these ones, these max and mins, uh, are going to represent at equilibrium. Uh, and then this one is going to be at whatever the max displacement is. Uh, so it would be the same for the left side, but I'm just doing one side at a time. Uh, so at equilibrium, now let's do the max displacement. At maximum displacement, this is going to be the highest gravitational potential it ever has. Down here is actually where gravitational potential, really you should define it as being zero because that's what makes the problem the easiest to solve is just to call that ug equals zero but as this gravitational potential goes down to zero we're going to end up having a max kinetic energy at this location at maximum displacement we actually have a kinetic energy equals to zero so it's coming up and it stops at maximum so it has no velocity up here and then it heads back down so the velocity is also zero at maximum displacement and we have maximum velocity at the equilibrium point. Um, some other things to keep in mind, um, our angle would be the biggest uh, up here, uh, this angle right there, uh, and then obviously would be equal to zero at that location there. We always define it uh, as the angle based off of the equilibrium position, not off of the displacements. Um, I think that hits most of the big things that um, we need on pendulums going back and forth as far as the minimums and the maximums. So make sure that you know why those are the mins, mins and maxes, because they'll ask questions that probe to see if you understand, but they'll also ask questions that are just should be pretty rapid of like, where's the maximum energy uh, or maximum kinetic energy, maximum speed, maximum uh, those kind of things. Uh, keep in mind though, that the total energy uh, or the mechanical energy is uh, always equal to, uh, stays the same as long as we are doing simple harmonic motion. Uh, final thing to talk about is just this equation down here. Uh, remember that the, the period of a pendulum is only based off of two variables, the length and uh, the uh, gravitational acceleration. Stuff that does not matter, mass does not affect 
the period of a pendulum. Mass does affect the maximum energy. It does affect the maximum kinetic energy, but it has no effect on the velocity uh, because the, the extra mass and the extra force of gravity is offset by the extra resistance to changes. Um, and finally, the other thing that really shouldn't matter is that the angle mostly doesn't matter, but we're going to always try and keep it below 10 degrees. For less than 10 degrees, this equation works. Going beyond 10 degrees, it becomes a problem. So thank you. That's everything you should know on pendulum facts.